Okay, this is the second video on entropy and spontaneity and thermodynamics. I should write that down. This whole, whole unit is on thermodynamics. It's a continuation of the unit on thermochemistry that we did at the beginning of the year. Um, and now we're going to talk more about entropy, which is where we left off. Just to review, spontaneous processes, we said those were processes that can proceed without any outside intervention. Um, and to keep in mind, if one direction is spontaneous, the opposite one is not, and pressure and temperature affect spontaneity. Spontaneity is not related to how slow or fast something can be spontaneous, but super, super slow. Um, all diamonds are spontaneously turning into graphite. I will show you my engagement ring in class. It's a diamond. You cannot see it turning into graphite. This is a very slow process, but it is spontaneous. If we all live to the end of time, diamonds would become graphite. We're, that's not going to happen, though. But um, whether or not something is spontaneous is not really related to how slow or fast it is. Okay, just to review, we, we ended our video, last video saying that entropy is a measure in general of thermal disorder. We're going to talk about that more now. And a spontaneous process is one that results in an increase in entropy or the thermal disorder of the universe. So before we talk more about entropy, which is thermal disorder, let's remember a little bit more about thermal or temperature. Temperature is the measure of average kinetic energy of the molecules in a sample. This guy, Lewis Bolt, Ludwig Boltzmann, described the concept of entropy on the molecular level, so we're going to investigate that now. And the slides that I'm about to go through are in this, the second packet that you picked up. Or if, you, if I staple them all together, they start in the middle with the picture of this guy. Uh, Ludwig Boltzmann is the first one. So I'm going to go through some of those now if you want to follow along on the slides. So let's think about what thermal disorder, and disorder means chaos or not being in order, not being aligned, being able, disorder means being able to be any place. Let's think about what thermal heat energy disorder would mean on a molecular level. And we're going to use a word called microstates. And a state is a way of being, and micro is very tiny. So microstates are thinking, where can molecules be? And we're going to think about where, how many places molecules can be. That's going to give us an idea of the possible disorder on a molecular level. And remember, this thermal disorder is the same as entropy. So let's look at this picture. I'm going to blow it up now. And this is for four molecules. You can see, oh, my writing is covering this up. I'm going to make it smaller. You can see the different places that four molecules can be if we have two, if they're in a, a, a chamber with, and the, and the valve is open. You could have... Am I still recording? Yes. Two, um, two in each chamber, um, but then you could switch them up. You could have the yellow and the red here and the blue and the purple there. You could have the blue, red, and yellow here. I mean, the purple, red, and yellow here and the blue here. So if you have four molecules in a chamber um, where they can go from one side to the other, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 different microstates, 16 different ways of being that those molecules can be distributed. That idea is going to be helpful in understanding entropy and which things have more entropy and which things have less, because the more microstates or ways of being that molecules can have, the more, and it's really the more ways they can distribute their energy, because you're distributing, by, by putting them in different places, you're distributing the energy of the molecules differently. And the more, that word is molecules, the more microstates you have for their energy, the more entropy you have. So now let's put, let's think about that a little bit more. And this is something new, but we're going to incorporate it into our thinking. Molecules can move in several different ways. Um, they can move from one side of the room to the other. That's called translational. You don't need to remember these actual words. They can vibrate, and they can rotate. They can turn around. Unless if they're a molecule, not a single atom, if they rotate, they're, they're, they're changing their energy level. So those are different ways they can 
use their energy. They can fly across the room, they can vibrate, or they can rotate. And so that's, and remember, distributing their energy in different ways is, is going to, the more ways they can distribute their energy, the more ways they can move around and be in different places, um, then they will have higher entropy. If, they're, if their ways of distributing their energy are less, they will have lower entropy or lower thermal disorder. So the number of microstates for any substance, and therefore the entropy of that substance, increases within temperature, because temperature increases kinetic energy, and the more energy of motion you have, then the more microstates you can have, because you can move around more. Also, the greater volume you have for something, then that means the more um, your, your molecules can move more around, they can move around more, more space to expand, and if they can move around more, they can distribute their energy in different ways. They can be in different places, so their entropy or thermal disorder would be greater. And also the number of independently move, moving molecules can affect your, um, the places they can be. If you have 16 molecules, you will have more. Think of that probability diagram with the little the things like this that I just showed you. It, these are the, that was a couple of slides before with the four different colored things. If you have 16 molecules, there would be more ways to distribute those than if you had four. So the number of molecules will affect um, how much entropy you have. More molecules, greater thermal disorder, greater entropy. So now let's use microstates to think about how entropy will change. This is entropy, our change in entropy. How entropy will change if we have a change in state. So entropy, entropy increases with freedom of motion of the molecules. So a gas is going to have more ability for molecules to move around than a liquid. So the gas would have higher entropy, and our symbol for entropy is S. So S uh, entropy would be greater in a gas than it is in a liquid. And in a liquid, molecules can move around more than in a solid. So a liquid would have greater entropy than a solid. Also, when a solid is dissolved in a solvent, entropy usually increases because then you are increasing the disorder of the solute. This, is our, this could be our solute down here, where this, if this was salt being dissolved in water. And your salt ions here are very ordered. There's not a lot of thermal disorder here. These molecules really can't move around much. They're locked in place. Once they dissolve in water, they can move around a lot more. So their thermal disorder, their um, microstates, their ability to be in different places and move around increases when they dissolve. The water molecules become a little more ordered because they're stuck here, but that doesn't um, compensate for the increased disorder of the salt dissolving. So usually when you dissolve a solid in a solvent, you're increasing the microstates for the, the solute. They can be much more, the solute ions or molecules can become much more disordered, and so your entropy increases when you dissolve a solute in a solvent. Okay, so in general, entropy increases when gases are formed from liquids and solids because the molecules in the gases can move around more than they could in the liquids and solids. So there's more microstates in a gas. Entropy increases also when liquids or solutions are formed from solids because the molecules or ions are locked into place in a solid, but in a liquid or solution they can move around more, so more microstates. If you increase the number of gas molecules in a reaction, you make more gas molecules, the entropy increases, and, and this is the same. If you increase the number of moles of something in a reaction, entropy increases. This is, I, I, I don't know why they have this picture with this example, but over here, this picture is an example of entropy decreasing. So right decreasing on top here. Because here, we are creating, we start out with three moles of a gas, two moles of nitrogen monoxide, one mole of oxygen, they react to form two moles of nitrogen dioxide. So you are decreasing the number of moles of gas. After this reaction takes place, you have two moles of nitrogen dioxide. You started out with three moles of gas, two plus one. You have fewer moles and fewer actual molecules here. So your entropy has gone down because we said entropy would increase over here if your gas molecules or your moles increased. Here they decreased. So at this, as a result of this reaction, what you would end up would have a lower entropy than this. And we're going to learn that if, if, if the entropy of the universe, this is a system, but if the entropy of the universe increases as something spontaneous, we're going to compare the changes in the system to the change in the universe to decide if it's spontaneous. That is to come. Okay, so I'm going to go over these. You can pause and try to, to do this yourself and then check it. 
um, but we're going to choose the sample of matter that has the greater entropy in each pair and explain. So first here I have one mole of sodium chloride solid or one mole of hydrogen chloride gas. Same number of moles, but this is a solid, this is a gas. A gas is going to have a higher entropy because the molecules can move around more so they can distribute their energy in more places. So this, what I've circled, this would have the higher entropy. The second one, we have two moles of hydrogen chloride gas or one mole of hydrogen chloride gas. So which one will have higher entropy? The one with the higher entropy will have the more moles of gas because then you have more p potential distributions if you have more moles or more molecules. Remember the probability diagram we saw earlier with the, the four little things? And we counted up, I think, 16 different places for those four molecules to be. Well, if we had, instead of four, if we had, if we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we would have even more statistical distributions for them. So more molecules, more moles means greater entropy, greater potential disorder. Here, now this last one here is a little more complicated just because we didn't really talk about it before, but we're going to talk about it now. We have the same number of moles, so that doesn't help, and they're both a gas, so that doesn't help us decide which one would have the greatest distribution of energy. But I'm going to draw them. Hydrogen chloride, I have hydrogen and I have chlorine, and then over here I just have argon circle. Now, if you remember that slide earlier, which um, talked about the different energies of molecules, you can have translational, and both of these can have translational energy because they could both fly across the room, okay? You can have vibrational energy. Both of these can vibrate, and you can have rotational energy. The only one of these that will have rotational energy is the molecule because it, when it shifts, when it, ro it can rotate around, let's, um, around the bond here, it can rotate, and that could change its, its energy distribution. A single atom can't really rotate and change its energy. It's, whether it turns around or not, it has the same amount. But the energy for this could be different depending on how these two atoms rotate around the bond. So if you have a molecule that will have higher, that is capable of having rotational energy. And so an atom really cannot have rotational energy, or not a lot anyway because it, it, whether it, wherever it turns, it's still exactly the same. So the hydrochloric gas would have greater entropy here. Okay, we're going to finish up this video talking about change in entropy when we have a change. So the, the previous one we were saying, just comparing two things and saying which had higher entropy. Now we're going to say, well, how, how do we evaluate when entropy changes? Because we're leading up to talking about Spontaneous systems will result in an increase in entropy in the universe, so that is a change. So what we're trying to get to be able to figure out is that a spontaneous process or reaction, I'll stop, a spontaneous reaction or process will result in an increase in the entropy of the universe, and an increase is a change. So we need to be able to figure out, well, is entropy changing? And how is it changing? Is it increasing or decreasing? We saw this a little bit in the previous slide, a couple of slides ago, where I talked about you had the picture of the two moles of nitrogen monoxide combining with one mole of oxygen to make two moles of nitrogen dioxide. And we said this was a decrease in entropy because the moles decreased to two. It was three on the reactant side. Um, so it, uh, we'll have a, a decrease in entropy if... We have a decrease in thermal disorder. I want to bring that slide. And you, sh you should be able to see that in the slide on the top of this page on the notes. We said entropy increases when gases are formed from liquids and solids, when liquids or solutions are formed from solids, or the number of gas molecules increases or the number of moles increases. And the opposite is true. If the opposite happens, entropy will, de entropy will decrease. So let's look at some examples. So here we have an example. Water as a liquid is going to water as a gas. You are going to have more opportunities for the molecules to move around and distribute their energy as a gas than as a liquid. So the entropy here would increase as a result of this reaction. 
It would, you'd have greater entropy at the end here than you did at the beginning. Let's look at another example. Here's another example. Solid sugar is added to water to form a solution. So we said in our previous slide that when liquids or solutions are formed from solids, generally the entropy would increase. So as a result of this process, the entropy of your solution here at the end oops, would be higher. Entropy would increase as a result of this process. Let's look at another example. So here we have a reaction where a solid iron is combusting or oxidizing with oxygen to form rust and our moles are changing, we're creating fewer moles and also even more importantly we're creating a solid where we had a, a solid and a gas so in our, our end product our entropy will be much lower so our entropy will decrease as a result of this, this, this process we have more entropy in our reactants, where we have a gas and the molecules can move around a lot, and we have seven moles. Here we have a solid that we've produced, so in our products, at the end of the reaction, our entropy will be much lower because there's many fewer ways for the energy to, to be distributed. The molecules really can't move around that much. So you will be practicing deciding if there's a change in entropy in class. I'm going to end this video here, and then we have one more we're going to talk about we're going to talk about this, how to decide if the process is spontaneous and compare the change in entropy in the system to the surroundings.